Hey guys, how's it going? So today is a kitchen day and we are going to be canning cherry tomatoes from the garden. So I need to finally start getting things out of my freezer. My freezer is stocked full of garden produce and it is time to deal with it. So last night I canned these jars of cherry tomato paste. Now today I'm going to be canning some whole cherry tomatoes. That way between the paste and the whole tomatoes I can make pretty much anything that I want to that involves tomatoes. That includes ketchup, pasta sauce, pizza sauce, uh, salsa, anything like that. An important thing to remember in your kitchen is your rules and you can do this however you feel comfortable with. But please do your research on food safety before you get started on canning. But it's really not that hard. We're just going to be sterilizing our jars, packing them with tomatoes, a splash of lemon juice in there, and water bath canning them for 40 minutes and that's all there is to it. So that's what we're gonna get started on today. But before we do that, I wanted to give a little announcement that on October 1st, our Christmas collection is launching on our website. And if you wanna support this channel, that would be a fantastic way to do so. We have uh, Christmas ornaments and uh, sweatshirts, magnets, note cards, stickers, a whole bunch of stuff. So if you would go check that out, it's www.thegpbb.com. That is the Golden Pepper Botanical Boutique. I would really appreciate it if you would go check it out, share it with a friend. But other than that, let's get on to the video. So this is my freezer. It is stocked full of peppers and tomatoes. And even down here, there's even more tomatoes and peppers and all kinds of stuff. So we are going to get all the tomatoes that we have out and let them unthaw. So I need to put away all these clean dishes and clean the kitchen before I get started. And something super awesome is we finally started getting eggs from our chickens. So two of our chickens have started laying so far. The uh, one of the golden lace wine dots and one of the Easter eggers. So we're getting a light brown egg and kind of like a bluish green, very pale blue egg. I can't wait to see what other colors the chickens start to lay, but it's really great finally getting eggs. They were born on April 11th, so that put them just starting laying at about 22, 23 weeks? About 23 weeks. And I'm sure before we know, we're going to have more eggs than we know what to do with. With six chickens and two people, even if every chicken only lays four eggs a week, that is still way more eggs than we need. So I'll be able to share some with friends and family and put some up for the winter with different preservation methods, and I'll do some videos about that in the future. So I am putting the large tomatoes back in the freezer to be dealt with later and I'm just going to be putting all of the cherry tomatoes in here so hopefully they're in more of like an even layer and they can uh, unthaw quicker. I think cherry tomatoes that are frozen sound like marbles. So we've got a few different varieties here. All of these seeds are from Baker Creek. Uh, these are the black strawberry. These are from Orange Hat. These have been a winner this year. They have been so prolific. These are pink bumblebee. And then we've got these guys here, black cherry. So that's the four varieties that we've got going here. These are so beautiful. I've heard a lot of bad reviews on these though. Um, I might just grow them because they're really pretty, but I will definitely be growing these again because these have been so incredibly prolific and they're just a really pretty striped orange pinky one. 
And then these black cherries, I will not be growing again. They never really change that much from this green black color on top. And other than that, they're just kind of brown. They're not super prolific. They're not really pretty to look at. But yeah, so I'm going to let all of these unthaw and then we will be back to can them. Okay, so we are back. Uh, it is actually a new day. I started this project on Saturday, but then some things came up. So now it is Monday, and we are going to finish getting these tomatoes all canned up. What you just saw me do was fill my large stainless steel pot that has a lid that I'm using for water bath canning. I filled it up uh, with as hot of water as my sink can go. That way it boils quicker. It has a rag on the bottom to help uh, prevent any thermal shock with the jars. I rinsed the jars out that I'm going to be using and I stuck them in with just a couple inches of water above which for these quart jars that I'm using, this pot is just a tad on the small side, so it's pushing a little bit, but we'll make it work. And so those are going to be sterilizing right now, and once that water comes to a boil, you're going to want to let it boil for 10 minutes, and then you can take the jars out and they're sterile and good. And then after that, once the water is still hot but not boiling anymore, I turn the heat off after I take the jars out to fill them. I put in my lids so the rubber seal around those can warm up, but you don't want to put those in boiling water. And even though the package on the ball uh, lids, like this little package here that they come in, it says that they don't need to be warmed up anymore. I've had a lot of failed seals when I don't warm them up first, so I recommend still going ahead and warming them up for a little bit before you put them on your jars. So what we're gonna do now is wash all these tomatoes and I'm actually going to put them in this big blue pot here and I am going to just cook them down just slightly. I'm not going to blend them up or anything. I'm not going to take any skins off or strain it or anything like that. I'm just warming them up, letting them release some of their juices so then I can do what's called hot packing. There's two different methods that you can use when you want to um, can cherry tomatoes or can anything for that matter. It's either hot packed or raw packed. And raw packing cherry tomatoes is as easy as taking your tomatoes, uh, poking some holes in them, stuffing them in your jar, and putting some hot water or boiling water over the top and canning them that way. But what I'm going to be doing now, since these are already, you know, not in the best shape because they've been frozen, I'm going to hot pack them, uh, which cooks them down a little bit. Raw packing definitely gives you a prettier looking product, but I would save that for any fresh tomatoes right out of the garden, ones that haven't been frozen. I'm just going to put the tomatoes in this pot and cook them down a little bit. And that way, since these are also 
cold because they've been in the fridge for a couple days. I don't wanna put those into hot jars once my jars come out of the water bath canner after they're done being sterilized. Rule of thumb for canning is if the jar is hot, the food is hot, it goes into the hot water. And if the jar is cold, the food is cold, the water's cold, you wanna keep everything the same temperature, that way you avoid thermal shock, which would break your jars. Here I've got the pot full of tomatoes and these have just been rinsed and now I'm just going to turn this on and kind of let them cook down a little bit, release some of their juices and then once the jars come out of this pot here, I'll put these in those jars to be canned with a little bit of lemon juice in each jar. So you can see all of this water and juice that has come out of the tomatoes. That's going to make your jars of tomatoes even that much more flavorful rather than just filling them all the way to the top with just water. And I'm also taking a toothpick and going through some of the ones that don't want to um, break their skin. And I'm just giving them a little stab because they, uh, they kind of explode. And that's not really something you want to happen inside your jars that could cause problems. So this just about got to a simmer. So I'm going to turn this off and just let this sit here, put a lid over the top of it, and just wait for my jars over there to be done being sterilized. I don't want this to start uh, breaking down into any ty type of tomato paste or anything. I want all of these juices to still be in here. And so I don't want it to start to boil and evaporate any of this water. So now that this is starting to boil, I'm going to put a timer on for 10 minutes. Time to fill up the jars with our tomatoes we first have to put in some lemon juice into the jars so if you have pint jars you're going to do one tablespoon of lemon juice for each jar and what I've got here are quart jars so I will be doing two tablespoons of lemon juice lemon juice and citric acid is a big topic amongst canners nobody can really agree so this is where the research comes in that you need to do and figure out first why you're doing something and then decide if you want to do it once you know the reasoning behind why. A lot of people who can very strictly by the book will only use store-bought lemon juice because it has a very specific pH level that helps bring the pH down uh, since not all tomatoes are created equal when you're talking about the pH level. pH is very important when you're talking about water bath canning to make sure your stuff is safe. A lot of people will swear by you have to use store-bought lemon juice because you don't know what you're going to get with the pH of just a store-bought lemon because it can fluctuate a lot. Other people will use a uh, fresh squeezed lemon. Other people don't use anything. I have used fresh squeezed lemon. Um, I try and always at least put a little bit of something in there, but that is where you have to make the judgment call for your own canned goods and not stress about it too much. I am first gonna start off with these two jars here and see if I need to use the third one after I get these filled. So I'm gonna be putting two tablespoons in the bottom of each jar. There we go. 
And this is just organic, 100% pure lemon juice from my grocery store. And now I'm going to just fill these with our tomato mixture over here. And that was actually the perfect amount for two quarts. So it doesn't matter that this guy's been sterilized, so he'll just go right back on the jar, no problem, and I'll use them for something else later. These are left with about a half inch of head space here, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'm not super picky about that. You just don't wanna fill it up too much because then you could run the risk of in the canner, um, things spill out, and then you've got f some food remnants on your rim, which could cause your jar not to seal. So the next step now is to debubble them. So take whatever tool you have. This came with my canning tool set. It actually has a nifty uh, measuring thing on this side that will tell you exactly how much headspace you have on your jar. Uh, but other than that, this is a debubbler. And so you just take any plastic, non-metal thing, because you don't want to scratch the container, and you just run it along the sides and that just gets out any potential air pockets and sometimes after you do this you might need to add a little bit more because if there were air pockets things might have sunken a little bit but you do that to all your jars before you wipe the rims with either white vinegar or just water I just do water then you put your lids and your rings on fingertip tight you don't want to wrench down on it and into the water bath canner it will go starter timer for 40 minutes since they are quarts uh, it'll be 40 minutes if they were pints it was 35 but some people argue that they just do 15 minutes for everything in the water bath canner no matter what so again that's where research comes in do it for whatever you feel comfortable but I'm gonna be doing it for 40 minutes and that time starts once the water starts boiling not once you put them in and now that this has started to boil or is just about to boil it's a very it's more of a simmer. I'm going to put my timer on for 40 minutes. And then the only thing left to do after that is just to pull them out of the canner and let them sit on the counter for at least 12 hours or overnight. Uh, and then you can take the rings off, clean them up if any, you know, anything spilled on them or whatever, make sure they're not sticky. Label them and put them on your shelf. And this doesn't have to be with cherry tomatoes or tomatoes that you grew in your garden. You can go to the farmer's market or even get them at the grocery store. So go can something and have a great day. Bye.